All right, so put the camera on the, the overhead picture, please. Start with here. I want you to, I would just, this is just fun. Fun stuff here. Okay, so you look, look at that. That's a, that's Yeshua. And you see the Hebrew letters that spell Yeshua. A Yod Shin Vav Ein. You can see how the three, if you put them, the four letters together over here, it actually forms a hand. The palm of a hand. <laughs> the power of Yeshua. The power in his hand. I came across this yesterday. I thought, man, that's really powerful. Down at the bottom, I want to read. It's Psalms 18. It's an 18 for the end of 18. We're in an 18 year, right? In the Gregorian calendar, God uses all of them. I'm telling you, he can use all of them. I'm telling you, God can use all things. Anybody agree with me? He can use all things for his glory to fulfill his purposes in the earth as they are in heaven. It says you, it's yod heh vav -Hey, have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. You, your care has made me great. And that confirms to me, leave that up there for a minute about what the Lord said to me he said that he said this to me because of my great faithfulness you will have great fruitfulness in your life and he's been highlighting how faithful he is to me for several weeks now as I was approaching the new Hebrew year I was thinking about things and that was the first really revelation I got from him word from him it's about his faithfulness we can do nothing apart from him. Without his faithfulness, there will be no fruitfulness in our life. You understand those words? Faith, full, the fullness of faith. The fullness of fruit. Your basket full to overflowing. But what's interesting is when you look at these letters. Now see, I did a teaching a long time ago. Out of Jeremiah chapter 32. Verse 6 through about, I don't know, 19. Maybe we're at the end of that 18, 19, that scripture. But it was about, it's about redemption. The right of redemption. Maybe you guys remember that. It, and it's the first time that the, the, the word for 17 is used. actually spelled out as 17 because it was 17 shekels of silver was the redemption price that Jeremiah had to pay to get his inheritance back. To buy back his inheritance. Oh, somebody's, <laughs> you ought to get excited right now. 17 so 17 is the number of redemption it's one of the numbers of redemption silver is the is the color of redemption silver represents redemption um, i got i got a plan today this is good so when you look at this yod shin vav ein when you add up the the small numerical value of each of those letters guess what it is 17 you can't make this stuff up it's in his name for redemption he's the redeemer i'm just this is just for fun i'm just showing you this this is how it all is circular and all is connected together and all flows together in a circular flow now what's really interesting is that if you just like uh you type in jesus into like an english hebrew translator you get the first three letters which are Yod Shin Vav for Jesus. You know what's cool about that? If the large gematria of that is 316. 316. Anybody follow me? Do you see? It's all hidden. It's all mysteries in there. God loves numbers. And numbers are what? Time. All time is based on numbers. In fact, all of creation is based on numbers. It's all numerical. <laughs> all of creation is in time with itself. It's like this huge clock and all the parts are moving. All the planets, all the galaxies, all the star systems, the earth, the sun, the moon. And we're supposed to be in that time. We're supposed to be mechanisms in that that are also moving in circular patterns. You ever looked on the inside of an expensive watch? The way they used to make them in Switzerland? All these little gears, and they're all perfectly in sync. Perfect divine synchronization in time. 
So the message of the, that I want to bring this morning, I'm going to give it a title I never do, but I'm going to. It's time. That's the name of this message. It's time. That's what the Lord is saying. I just thought that was absolutely awesome. <laughs> you know, the yod is the power of his hand, the nail in the hand, the power of Yeshua's hand. Wow. Right hand is what? Authority and power. It's a hand of kingship. The hand of the king. Shin is, is the, you see it's threefold. It's a crown. Shin looks like a crown. <laughs> the yod is the father. Wow. Shin is like a fire. Remember Pentecost? A fire selling like tongues of fire, like a crown of fire. Tongues, it said. Multiple tongues, like three. <laughs> Fullness of God. <laughs> Whoo, Father, Son, Holy Ghost on top of your head. Like a fire to, to consume all darkness, all chaos, all sin. Anything that's not like him. The fire purifies. Fire transforms. Who fire brings a new beginning. It brings new growth. Is that not true? That's why fire is good in a forest. That's why forest fires can be good. They're God ordained. Lightning strikes from heaven, starts a fire to burn out all the underbrush, everything that's grown up, that's blocking the light, that's keeping the new from coming forth. So when the fire comes and it burns, it removes all the brush, all the debris, it removes all the dead. The dead burns up first. The wood, hay, and stubble. <laughs> It all burns up so that the sun, so that the light can reach the earth, which will cause new life to spring up and to grow. And God sends the rain to bring maturity for what? For whatever is growing to come to a place of full fruitfulness, much fruit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shabbat and the valve. See, the valve is a connector. It's a connection. It connects heaven and earth. It's like a pillar of light. It's a straight line. It's pure white light. The valve is revelation. Revelation is that's what light is. It's revelation. God revealing who he is. <laughs> that's good, huh? I think it's good. Wow, I think it's awesome, actually. Okay, put up the second picture, please. I just wanted to show you how God works. I mean, I, I just got this a while ago. <laughs> I got all that I'm going to say today. Well, most of it a while ago. It's just awesome, fun stuff. Because, see, I'm open to it. I, I am open to God speaking to me through numbers. I'm open to God to reveal to me his timeline, to understand the times and to see. I'm open. If you're, whatever you're open to will open for you. I got to say that again. Whatever you're open to will open for you. <laughs> if you don't believe it, it's not, you're not going to see it. You guys are open to what's at your house. That's why it opens for you. See, you believe. Faith is like a key that unlocks it. Carl, when you go pray for people, you're open to it. You're open. You know. You're desiring it. You're seeing it. And so it opens for you. You see the fulfillment, the manifestation, the completion of a thing. But we can't be so narrow-minded that we only think God is one, one, one way just just one gifting or one anointing or one day or one stream many streams make up the river of god many make up the city of god 
many parts make up the body of Jesus Christ. So let's not limit him. Glory, hallelujah. So this is a, the Hebrew calendar. I love it, circular. See, you can't do this in the Gregorian. I guess you could, but in the Gregorian, we, this, this Western Greek mindset thinks linear, linearly. Is that how you say that? My mouth is so dry, I can't even talk now. It's weird how that happens. Every time the anointing comes, I dry out. I gotta drink some more water, drink some wine. God's pouring out a new wine, by the way, because it's time. It's time for the new wine. It's time for the fine wine. And that takes time. And it's been, it's been fermenting. It's been bubbling. It's being <laughs> prepared. There is a new wine for the last time. <laughs> Think about it. Think about where there was new wine, where there was the best wine at the wedding. And what else was that? What was in the pots? The pots. Wine. But the first wine was a watered down wine. It was water and wine mixed. And they served that first. But he said, the best wine I save for last. And that's what I'm talking about. We have stepped into a new time. We have crossed over into a new, whatever you want to call it, age, era, millennium. <laughs> and it's time for the best wine. The, the, the full wine. The most potent wine of all. One sip and you're drunk. It's that high. It carries that much power, potency in it spiritual wine the best wine he saved for last it was at a wedding with a bride and a groom consummating a marriage fulfilling their marriage contract or covenant see we're in a marriage and God has made a marriage contract covenant in Hebrew you'd call it a ketubah <laughs> the bridegroom promises seven things that he will do provide for his wife through their marriage the bride writes a ketubah these are the seven things she will do for her husband to fulfill him him to fulfill her you understand I'm talking about fullness I'm talking about fulfilling promises fulfilling covenants and it's really cool because at the wedding the bridegroom now, the bride encircles her husband seven times while she reads the ketubah, her covenant to him. See, it's an act. See, Hebrews believe in action. Greeks believe in philosophy. We just believe in the power of the soul, a Greek mindset. A Hebrew heart understands that it's real. It's not just a thought. That thought will become a reality if you act on it. it takes actions. It takes stepping out and doing something that you've never done before. You're not going to go into the unknown unless you leave the known. You've got to leave what you know to go into what you don't know. <laughs> and that's hard because we're all amateurs <laughs> when you get over here. It's never been before. We have entered into a time that's never been before. And it, here's the thing. I think it was Einstein said this. If you do the same thing, doing the same thing the same way, expecting some different results, that's the definition of stupidity. <laughs> you can't go into the new and do the same old. It's not the same old, same old <laughs> anymore. It's something new. So we got to change. The new wineskin has to be adaptable to the new wine. has to be transformed. 
has to be pliable and soft and willing and well oiled anointed it's how they would make the old wineskin a new wineskin again how they would renew it and make all things new you understand that's what the Holy Spirit's been doing for a couple of days now <laughs> a couple thousand years making the old wineskin new old things have passed away but all things have become new what is that second corinthians what five what 17 is that by happenstance a 17 he's preparing us for our full redemption to receive our full inheritance your full redemption as a son and daughter of the father the father in heaven <laughs> This is so good. Okay, so look at this. Look at this diagram. And if you're going to think like a Hebrew, we got to we got to start. Now you understand that there's two calendars. We've talked about this. You guys know this stuff. I think. You know, Hebrews operate. They have the first calendar was a relig is the religious or spiritual calendar. Goes from Nisan. All the way to Kislev. No, no, that's not right. That's just December. Whatever it is, throw they're up there. To, uh, yeah, Adar. And there's some years that there's two Adars. It's really interesting. Double portions. <laughs> At the end. See Adar? That's a 12. That's important this morning. Because God gave me a word about the 12s. Just this morning before I came out here. The twelves. I mean, actually, no. Actually, I got it. Yeah, I got it while, during worship. Somebody I don't even know sent me a messenger message. I usually don't open it, but I felt like I was supposed to open it, and so I did. And she was asking me a question about the twelves. What it means. Because she was getting the word release. And she was a little confused. I don't even know how she knows me or how I would know about it, but... She was asking me, how, 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 am I right about this? What does 12 mean? And she was right, but it was only the beginning. It's the releasing of the government of his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. The releasing of his fullness of his power and authority on earth as it is in heaven. Kingdom rulership. Kingdom government. The fullness of 12. That's why there's 12 months. That's why there's 12 on your clocks. God operates. God created time to operate in it so we would understand, so we would be, we could see it and be in alignment and in agreement with His time, with what He's doing in that moment. In that Hebrew, it would be called a Murad. In that Moed, in that time, that appointed time. In the, in the Greek, it would be a Kairos, an appointed time, <laughs> with something supernatural begins to happen breaks out god uses all times for us to understand i'm trying to i want to tell you today what time it is <laughs> now so you look at nissan and you see the seven feasts of god and you know that i had a visit uh, an encounter i was seeing in the heavenly realms and these angels were leaping off the edge cliff of heaven into the earth by the multitudes of them. First, they were 11s. They were, had like 11 on them. The number 11. They were the 11s angels. The awakening angels were being poured out to awaken his bride. How do you awaken? You blow the trumpet. We call it an alarm. It's like a trumpet. Sharon's got this weird trumpet to play. They're going, they go, bark, 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 sound like a chicken, like a rooster. Man, it's so annoying. That'll wake you up. There's an awakening going on. God is awakening us to what time it is. It's time to get up, church. It's time to wake up, church. It's time to get up and do something, church. It's time to make a change, church. <laughs> I'm going to tie all this together. Then you see, see Passover. It's called Passover, but it's threefold. It's three parts to it, three and one. It's Passover, unleavened bread. 
And then what they call the second Passover or the, what is, it's the first fruits offering. <sighs> then you see Pentecost up there. Pesach and then Shavuot. Shavuot, Shavuot. Pentecost. And then you go on, it's just one day. The first feast is seven days. Second feast is one day. This is important. This is God's time clock. We need to know what time it is. Because there is a sound. There's an alarm going off right now in the spirit. He's announcing what's happening. And most of the church does not have ears to hear what time it is. And if you don't know what time it is, you'll be doing the wrong thing in the wrong place for the wrong reason, purpose, with the wrong people. And the end result is going to be wrong. <laughs> I don't want to be wrong at the end of this thing. I want to be right. I want to be righteous. Righteous. Right. Us. Right. With him. <laughs> right. Us. Righteous. And then you have the last feast which is called tabernacles but it's actually three what's interesting if Nisan is the first month in the spiritual religious calendar Tishri is the seventh month but in the civil calendar the other calendar is the first month for a Jew so it's like the ending and the beginning oh this is a picture there's a pattern here the ending and the beginning in the same month the former and the latter reign in the same month. The ending equal the beginning. They're the same. Being the same. It will be in the end like it was in the beginning. In a garden with God and his son. In relationship with nothing in between them. No darkness. Because in verse 4 God divided the light from the darkness. Genesis 1.4 which is really a cool scripture when you dig into it God divided God separated he's still separating to those that are willing to come under his hand Yeshua his hand that's the father's hand extended in the earth his name was Jesus Yeshua came he went back but the hand remained Where's the hand of God now? In the body. The body's the hand. There's still a hand. God's hand in the earth. It's dirty. It's, it's crippled. It needs restoration. Power and authority. The right hand. Kingship. Rulership. Sonship. I'm a son. Who's called to rule as a king. In his kingdom, my father's kingdom, using his power and authority, using his name. I'm not my own. I don't have my own name. It's his name that he's put upon me, in me. Okay, so there's the seven feasts. There's seven. <laughs> All the way from the beginning of Passover, threefold, Pentecost, onefold. Tabernacles threefold. Tabernacles. Rosh Hashanah or Rosh Hashanah. Which is actually the feast is the day of trumpets. <laughs> and it's two days. Now last week you remember I had, I had a vision during worship and I saw, I saw angels blowing trumpets. But the first angel angels were silver trumpets. And I thought they all should be silver trumpets because that, in the natural, that's in Israel when they celebrate the beginning of the new year, the first in the first month, but also in the seventh month, seven in the first as one in the same month, same time. There's always an overlapping, guys, in everything God does. There's always an overlapping because it's always continuous to flow. It's not like linear. It doesn't stop. It's circular. There's no end. Show me the end in a circle. Where's the ending point? There isn't one. 
There's no beginning and no ending. Sounds like God to me. He has no beginning and no ending. <laughs> oh, man, these pictures are awesome. I love the patterns. There are patterns that we're supposed to be following, taking on the appearance of, operating in. And so you have the trumpets, the Feast of Trumpets, which is actually Tishri 1 and 2. Tishri, Tishri, by the way, is an awesome, is an awesome word. I'm not going to go into it, but it's awesome. It's the Tav, the Shin, and Aresh. It's the last three letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And that's not by chance that it's the seventh month and the first month. And it's the last three letters is how you spell it. <laughs> I'm talking about the ending of something. It's the last three. It's the fulfilling. It's the letters that represent the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It's the letters that, that is a full picture of our redemption. Because the last letter is a cross. The picture of, of the, the Tav is a cross. The shin is the fire of God on our heads. His lordship and kingship. You know, the letter Zion, which was a seven. When we were in a 17, the seven. Picture of a sword, a scepter, and a crown. Three, the sword, the scepter, the crown. It's a picture of a king. A righteous king. I'll just throw this out there. The nine that we're in now, five, seven, seven, nine, getting ready to go from eighteen to nineteen on the other calendar. The nine is the letter Tet. <laughs> and it's made up of two letters. The letter Tet is made up. It, you, they make it from using the Zion, which is the righteous king, and Avav, which is the sixth letter, which represents man. But the Vav is bending down, is bowing before the righteous king. In the Tet, it's made like this. So this is a time of humility. Humility before honor. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up in the right time. In his time. This is good stuff, guys. I think. So. Lord, help me navigate this in a quick way. We are in a, a divine time here. We, and I've taught this the last few Sundays, these last three feasts, which we would call tabernacles, have not been fulfilled in the church, by the church, through the church. There has not been a fulfillment of it from heaven into the earth. There's been a fulfillment of it from the earth into heaven. His name is Jesus, Yeshua, fulfilled all seven. He is all seven. <laughs> he is the feast were all pointing in a picture of him and the work that he was going to do. Seven completion, seven con fullness. Seven is a final number, it's a sacred number of God. Seven days. And the seven is a rest. <laughs> Noah was a seven. His name means rest. As in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the end of this age. Entering into a rest. Not all the people on the earth, a remnant that were in the ark, entered into a rest. <laughs> and they ended up what? In a new place, a higher place on earth. On top of a mountain. On earth as it is in heaven. They ended up on a mountain just like Moses ended up on a mountain. <laughs> Forty days and nights on top of a mountain with God. 
40 represents a generation. 40 also is transformation. We're in a time, the transformation of a generation, but it's a remnant generation. There's always a remnant. Hmm. Are we in the remnant? The remnant are those crazy fish that always swim upstream instead of downstream with the flow of the world. <laughs> They're always going against the current of the common, acceptable way. <laughs> I can't help it. That's who I am. I tick people off. I got a gift of uh, irritation sometimes. I irritate people. It's okay. It's good. Their flesh don't like me. Hmm. But there's something deep in them that does that's bearing witness with me. They just won't let it out. Hallelujah. And I'm just crazy enough to let it out most of the time. Hmm. It's God in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Okay, I got I gotta move on here. Lord help me. Because there's so much. We are in a, a moment, it's, it's, it's a divine appointment. It's a divine time. There's a word that people are, all this stuff, you're going to hear confirmations of it. Some people are calling it a turnaround. It's not really a turnaround. Sorry, the lady that posted this on Elijah's list. It is a change. It is a change. It's a big shift. There is a big shift happening because we're in a new time. It's time. It's a new time. It is unprecedented, but it's not really a turnaround. It's it's an awakening <laughs> where we're not going to do the same old same old. There's going to there's going to be we're going to we're going to go a different way. But it's not backwards. It's still forwards. It's actually in the straight path. It appears that the majority is walking in a straight path. You know, like somebody's walking, follow me, walking in a path straight. This is The world thinks they got it right. You know, you're right in their own eyes. A man is right in his own eyes. They think this is the way. But actually, in reality, in God's eyes, <laughs> if this, is, this is the threshold right here, stepping into a new time. <laughs> the reality, they think they're going straight. But the reality, this is what they're doing. They're going off at an angle because they're perverted. The remnant is actually still going straight. We're following. We're walking in the path of light. The rest of the world and, and the church is going that way. <laughs> they're, they're going forward all right, but they're missing the mark. They're going that way. I'm still going this way. Following him. That's it. Just following him. Being led by the spirit. Because I'm a son of God. And so are you. Huh. Hmm. So we're at this time. In the calendar feast. The feast calendar. And the, and the Hebrew calendar. The year 5779. Hmm. Jesus. I don't even know where that other page is at. Okay, let me just say it like this. Yeah, I know what it is. I can just do it from memory. Passover, the threefold. Passover, bread, first fruits have been fulfilled. Jesus, this is, these are all Jesus. He was all three. Oh, come on. Okay. There's seven statements that Jesus made. The seven I am statements of Jesus. <laughs> this is what he said. He said, I am the true vine. John 15. I am the bread of life. John 6. I am the light of the world. John 8. I am the gate. John 10. <laughs> I am the resurrection and the life. John 11. At 11. 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, double seven. And a six for man. Seven I am's that Jesus said he was. That he is. Mm. How many feasts are there? Seven. Seven is what? A sacred number. Fullness. Completion. Divine. Time. Perfect. Perfection. Divine perfection. The fulfilling. The completion of a season. A completion of a time. So. And, and the church fulfills this by receiving Jesus Christ. As our Lord. As our Savior. As our Redeemer. Our Deliverer. All those things. He is. And then you go out of the first three into the fourth feast, which is Shavuot or Pentecost in Greek, which the Pentecost word in Greek means 50. And it was exactly the way they called it that because it was 50 days after day one, Passover, Nisan 1. 50. What's 50? Jubilee. 50 is the gematria, the numerical value of the letter noon, which is a fish. Picture of a fish swimming, living waters, life, swimming in a river. Living, swimming, flowing, moving. And it's a letter for Messiah. The Hebrews, the noon is the letter of Mashiach. Mashiach is Jesus Christ. Is Jesus or Yeshua the anointed. Shiach the anointed one mm. so you have Pentecost and Jesus is our Jubilee he's all of these things 50 that's why I believe God is going to do something special with the 50's and over <laughs> the Yoda generation because we're seasoned we've been through a lot of seasons we got a lot of wisdom some more than others but there's still wisdom in the gray hairs the silver hair there's redemption we understand some things now that you cannot understand unless you've spent some time unless you've lived some years you can't get it out of a book it's not head knowledge it's from experience God's going to use this older generation as leadership to lead now not about me but about him following him mm. it's not a hierarchy order you know where you have the big guy up here and then you got the second tier of his leaders that really aren't leaders they're, they're, they're just yes men that just agree with him no matter what then <laughs> you might have a second tier of those guys which in the church we call deacons you'd have the head guy who's the apostle then you got the elders then you got the deacons and deaconesses and then you got all the people underneath looks like a mountain with the head guy on top ruling and reigning but God's kingdom is upside down the head guy's on the bottom the servant of all it's not a hierarchy. It's a hierarchy. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church and do that. The leader is a servant of all. The greatest servant. Jesus said, if you want to be greatest in the kingdom, be the servant of all. <laughs> that'd, be a, that'd be a good uh, measuring stick. These, <laughs> of who a true man of God is and isn't. Are they willing to serve? Will they wash the toilet? Will they mop the floor? Will they vacuum the carpet? Will they drive a car that's 20 years older than the other people in the congregation? Because it's not about that. They want to use the resources for the kingdom to help people. To like start a school. And, and, and impart and teach young people. Disciple them in the ways of God. <laughs> We're in an Esther 414 time, guys. For such a time as this have we been brought into the kingdom. 414. 
four open door, 14 Messiah, the anointed, the anointing, 14 is a double seven, double portion. <laughs> Guess what? 414, 414. Hebraically equals what? Nine. We're in a 5779. Hebrews would say we're in a year 779. They wouldn't say the five. They understand we've been here for a thousand years. It's a millennium. Been here a long time. 700. 700, actually, the first word in the Bible that has a numerical value of 700 is the word Seth. The third son of Adam and Eve. The first two sons, Cain and Abel, the first son killed the second son. Oh, come on, somebody. The first son, Israel, killed the second son, Jesus. Cain killed Abel. But there's a third son. The second son died, became him to bring many sons into glory. The third son, the Seth. Guess what Seth's name means? Recompense. <laughs> receiving your inheritance, receiving what's rightfully yours, the right of redemption. Okay, I guess you don't get excited like I did about that. That I thought that was just awesome. Because <laughs> we're that. We're 700. It's a Tav and a Shin. It's the last two letters together. <laughs> Fire the cross. You got you to gotta be crucified. You got to be dead to yourself. You got to die. You got to crucify yourself with Christ. I've crucified the old man, Paul said. I put the old man on the cross. I die daily, Paul said. I get on my cross daily and die. Just like he did. Just like Tov did. <laughs> I'll do now. Because I want to fulfill all things. So 779. You got the 700. You got a 70. And then you got a 9. If you break it down in place value. Math lesson. Hundreds place. Tens place. Ones place. 779. <clears throat> What's 70? Mm, 70. I don't have these notes in front of me. 70 is the, is the Sanhedrin, the highest governmental <laughs> council court. The court of 70. They were the ones that made life and death decisions concerning Israel. They were the ones that condemned Jesus to death. It wasn't Pilate. It wasn't the Roman government. It was the Sanhedrin. The religious leaders. It was the Cain spirit. That slew the Abel spirit, which was the son spirit. See, Abel was a picture of Jesus. Cain was a picture of the serpent. Seed. They were brothers, but they weren't of the same seed. Mm. You can think about that one. Something happened at that tree of knowledge of good and evil. The serpent seed. It's not in my notes. I'm just seeing it in the spirit. So I'm saying it. Yeah. What seed are you of? <laughs> Who? But then comes Seth. And the Bible says in, in, I think it's chapter 4, that Seth came forth because, or in the likeness of Abel, to, 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 to fulfill Abel. To, I don't want to say replace, but that's the only word I know. He replaced Abel. He picked up the mantle of Abel and continued on as the third son. And then there were many more after that, right? So it's like Seth is like a picture of a forerunner. A third son. Sons of God arise. The third day. The third son is arising. The third day since time changed. At a cross on Calvary, place of Golgotha. <laughs> 